Eric DeBalconaire on count one, the class E felony of involuntary manslaughter in the second degree, I sentence you to a term of incarceration in the Missouri Division of Adult Institutions of three years. On the unclassified felony of armed criminal action, I sentence you to a term of incarceration of six years in the Missouri Department of Corrections. Those cases, or rather those counts and sentences will run concurrent with one another for a total term of incarceration of six years. And the parties have a right to expect that no matter what I hear, I will only consider factors that are appropriate and that I will disregard those that are inappropriate. And that is what I've done here. And as a result, I've concluded as follows. There are a number of facts in this case that are both aggravating and mitigating, sometimes all at the same time. First and foremost is this undeniable and uncontested fact. Cameron Lamb is dead. And Eric DeValconeer killed him. That's undisputed. Cameron Lamb was by all accounts a helpful and loving son, brother, father, and friend. People who have contacted me and who I have heard from today have described him as funny, caring, giving. Miss Gray called him a protector, a jokester, and my favorite of all the ones that I read, not a saint, but our angel. Cameron's Lamb, Cameron Lamb's death leaves an irreparable and unfillable void in the lives of his family and his friends and also in our community. Also, as I'm weighing all these facts, it can't be overlooked that the offense of December 3rd of 2019 were initially set into motion by Cameron Lamb and his decision to chase his girlfriend, girlfriend through city streets at dangerously high speeds, putting motorists and other members of the public at risk. However, those events tragically concluded with the actions of Troy Schwamm and the defendant. Pulling up to defendant's house, Sergeant Schwamm pulling into the driveway, immediately getting out with his weapon drawn, rapidly moving into the backyard, carport, garage area of the house, and defendant doing the same. Both without taking a breath, without pausing for the briefest of moments to consider where they were going, what they would find when they got back there, whether they were acting lawfully in doing so, and whether there might be some other safer option without so much as a, hey, Troy, wait. At any point, Sergeant Schwamm and the defendant could have done this, a fact that is made even more aggravating as the court considers an appropriate sentence in this case by the fact that the one person who ultimately did take a breath that morning was Cameron Lamb. He did this when at some point, while he was chasing his girlfriend, he decided to discontinue the chase and to go home. The video from the helicopter shows this decision, shows how it played out. Cameron Lamb is not racing through the streets of his neighborhood at this point. He's not driving through yards to get away from anyone. He does not abandon the truck and let it roll into someone's yard uh, while he flees on foot. Rather, he simply pulls into the driveway of his home, pulls around back, puts the vehicle into reverse, and slowly begins backing it down the driveway under the carport and into his garage. Then Sergeant Schwamm and Eric DeValconeer arrive, and as the court has found, an encounter that was over and a situation that had de-escalated was again escalated by what I have found, rightly or wrongly, was their unlawful entry into the backyard carport area and confrontation of Cameron Lamb. This is an aggravating factor. The circumstances of the offense as described during the trial, however, also provide the court with a mitigating factor. I found as I've considered the evidence in the case that the defendant, Eric DeValconeer, testified credibly at trial that he was rushing to provide cover for Sergeant Schwamm, who had rushed into the backyard with his weapon drawn, prompting the defendant to do the same from the other side of the house. Although not in the court's view, again, rightly or wrongly, negating his obligation to act with reasonable care as the court found he has failed to do, his natural reaction to protect his partner is a factor for me to also consider. And let's also be clear, and 
It is hard to accept this distinction. I know that. Murder and involuntary manslaughter arising from criminal negligence are two different things. They are different legal concepts. They are different things. Eric DeValconair is not Derek Chauvin who murdered George Floyd. Eric DeValconair is not one of the three men in Georgia convicted of running down and murdering Ahmaud Arbery. This is a mitigating factor. Defendant has no prior criminal history. His ORAS scores him as a low risk in all categories. Defendant's history as a police officer, husband and father, friend and colleague is also a mitigating factor that I have taken into account as his father asked me to do, which I was already going to do, and that is to consider the totality of the circumstances and to, to, to consider the totality of the defendant's life. The facts and the circumstances in the history of defendant's career and his life that have been presented to this court have demonstrated he has not hesitated to immediately take action when he believed the circumstances surrounding him warranted it. And this trait has generally served him and others well. It also failed him, as it did on December 3rd of 2019. All of which, however, leads the court back to where it began, an evaluation of the impact of the defendant's crime on Cameron Lamb and his family. Cameron Lamb is dead. Eric DeValconair killed him. And the court has found that that happened because the defendant acted without considering or being aware of the substantial and unjustifiable risks associated with his conduct and that his actions were a gross deviation from the standard of care that a reasonable person would exercise in the situation. Having concluded uh, as I have, having considered all those factors, I ask counsel if there's any legal reason or cause having been shown why sentence uh, and judgment of the court should not now be pronounced. Not from the state, no, sir. Eric DeBalconer on count one, the class E felony of involuntary ma manslaughter in the second degree, I sentence you to a term of incarceration in the Missouri Division of Adult Institutions of three years. On the unclassified felony of armed criminal action, I sentence you to a term of incarceration of six years in the Missouri Department of Corrections. Those cases, or rather those counts and sentences, will run concurrent with one another for a total term of incarceration of six years.